San Cristobal, a paradise for renewable energy. This project is part of a government strategy led by the Ministry of Energy to transform Galapagos over the next few years into a territory free of fossil fuels. There is a place like no other in the South Pacific. The Galapagos Islands is the most celebrated destination in the Republic of Ecuador. It is estimated that the population of the Galapagos will reach 25,000 people by the year 2008. There are 13 main islands in the archipelago. Four of them are inhabited. The inhabited islands are Santa Cruz, San Cristobal, Floriana and Isabella. Tourism, fishing and agriculture are the main economic activities for local residents. Approximately 10 million gallons of fossil fuel enter the islands every year. 2 million gallons are used to produce electricity from the diesel powered generators. Elec Galapagos is the electricity utility in the islands. This big demand of fuel, which is increasing with the population, implies the risk of an eventual ecological disaster. That was the case on January the 16th in 2001, when the Jessica, an oil tanker, ran aground in front of the coast of Puerto Bacariso Moreno, San Cristobal Island, causing an oil spill which released 145,000 gallons of fuel into the marine ecosystem. In order to avoid future catastrophes, companies from the international organization E8, together with the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy, the UNDP, United Nations Foundation, ELEC Galapagos, and the Municipality of San Cristobal, combined efforts to build the first wind power park in Ecuador. This facility will provide Puerto Bacariso Moreno, the capital of Galapagos province, with long-term fuel-free sources of power. The mission of the E8 group of power companies is to promote sustainable energy development anywhere in the world. The main objective of the San Cristobal Wind Project is to replace the existing generating system based on diesel combustion on the island with a clean energy source produced by wind turbines as much as it is technically and economically feasible. For constructing and operating the wind park, several environmental protection regulations had to be considered. Taking special account of this project is located within the influence area of the Galapagos National Park. Initial research indicated that the ideal place to install the wind towers was San Joaquin Hill. However, this region is home to the Galapagos petrel, an endangered bird and we were concerned about how the construction would affect their habitat and flight patterns. In addition, the area is an important ecosystem that supports the population of myconia plants and endemic shrub. With the assistance of the Galapagos National Park and the Charles Darwin Foundation, we sought out a new site for the wind park that would have less of an impact on the local environment. Further research identified Tropezon Mount, a hill located within the farming area of the highlands as the ideal location both environmentally and with good wind conditions. It was necessary to create a commercial trust financed by Fondos Pichincha to manage the administration of project resources. The building of the wind power park began on the 1st of September 2006. That day changed the history of the Ecuadorian electrification. MADE, a Spanish company, provided the equipment and the assembly of the system. An Ecuadorian firm, Santos CMAE, was responsible for civil works and construction. The transmission lines were built by Ecuadorian firm Electro. They completed their work in two working phases. Phase one included the building of access road installation of underground cables, preparing the site and providing aggregates for the concrete foundations. 
Workers from Santo Semei reinforced an extended existing pier, La Red Vial, located in Puerto Bacariso Moreno. This was a necessary step to allow the big barge with a capacity of more than 5,000 tons to dock successfully. This barge transported heavy machinery, towers, wind turbines and special machinery for project construction. Once everything was in port, a very careful operation took place to transport all the equipment and huge turbine components. Special vehicles were brought to the island for transport. It was quite an event for San Cristobal Island. Phase 2 include the construction of concrete foundations for the wind turbines. The assembly of equipment, installation of interconnecting cables and grounding systems. Installation of substation equipment. Automation of the existing diesel units and start-up of the project. The construction of foundations became a logistical challenge. Two plants of concrete and mixer trucks were taken to the islands to ensure success. Approximately 225 tons of cement were brought from the mainland. The concrete was made with local aggregates and sand. Thus it went through several laboratory tests to verify its resistance. Due to the characteristics of the soil on the island, we had to develop deep excavations and to replace poor material with a properly compacted filler. In July 2007, the wind turbines and their blades arrived together with a large crane of 230 tons, required to install towers and wind turbines. That was the second shipment. This time of year, the weather is rainy, windy and foggy. Despite the bad weather conditions, a group of workers with special suits and equipment begins the installation of tower number three. After many working hours, the first segment of the tower is set at the base. The second, which is longer and thinner, demands higher concentration to the technicians and operators due to the thick fog which interferes with visibility. and the soil has become mud, making operators work an even more difficult task. The time has come to install the wind turbine nacelle. Once it is in position, the crane begins to pull it up, supported by thick steel cables. These 30 tons are lifted slowly until they disappear into the fog. The crane operator has zero visibility. He continues operating the equipment, following the directions he receives by radio from the rest of the team. This heavy structure, hanging from the steel cables, is taken very carefully to its final destination, the top of the tower, 50 meters above the ground, where another group of workers secures a nacelle to the tower. This time they needed two coordinated cranes, one to lift the blades up and the other to guide it. The final adjustment before lifting it up The experience of assembling the first tower simplifies the process for the following. Never 
nevertheless, the level of complexity remains the same. Each wind turbine reaches 80 meters from the base to the top of this extended blade. The tower is 50 meters high and every blade is 30 meters in length. To optimize the use of the wind energy, the wind turbine rotates on its own base, guided by a computerized system. The position of the blades is also controlled by the same system. When they need more wind, the blades rotate to be in a frontal position. If less wind is desired, the blades are rotated to be perpendicular. Every wind turbine can produce up to 800 kilowatts. In total, the wind park is able to generate up to 2,400 kilowatts with optimal wind conditions. In 2008, we plan to produce more than 4 million kilowatt hours with the wind park. And due to the increasing demand expected on the island, by the year 2018, more than 5 million kilowatt hours. And by the year 2028, 7 million kilowatt hours. There are approximately 7,000 people living on San Cristobal Island. The population currently demands an average of 8 million kilowatt hours every year. The wind power park, which began to produce clean energy on the 1st of October 2007, covers 50% of this demand, while the other 50% is still produced generators. And there will be synchronous generators that run in uh, parallel with the diesel generators, which is very complicated because we must always ensure that the wind energy and the diesel energy matches the consumer's demand on the island. So it involves very complex control systems since we intend to, to provide a very high percentage of wind uh, energy to the grid. This hybrid wind diesel system falls in the highest penetration category and has become one of the most important achievements of its kind throughout the world for isolated areas. In order to respect the environmental management plan, the Commercial Trust contracted the Walsh Ecuador Company to develop an environmental auditing. Thanks to this project, the inhabitants of San Cristobal became the first Ecuadorians to receive clean energy from a wind power project. This project improves our image at national and international level. This and other similar projects are going to be completely sponsored and supported by us in order to provide them with a sustainable working frame. The execution of the project required a budget of $10 million, funded mainly through donations from the E8 companies, led by American Electric Power of the United States and RWE from Germany. Approximately five and a half million dollars were donated through their participation. The United Nations Foundation donated $320,000. Voluntary donations from income tax amounted to $400,000. And approximately $3,300,000 were provided by the Rural Electrification Fund through Elec Galapagos. The project has been qualified as a clean development mechanism project. As such, it will have an access to the world trade on carbon certificates. The success of this project becomes an important example to be replicated in other islands in the Galapagos Archipelago and on the mainland Ecuador. There are many opportunities for projects like these in Ecuador. We have started with the Galapagos because of its ecological and environmental importance as it is necessary to reduce the combustion of fossil fuels in the archipelago. We should never again ignore the wealth of natural resources that God has provided us here in Ecuador. We must take advantage of the opportunity to protect the very last resources we have, wind, sun and heat. A long time ago, Charles Darwin sailed here with the wind at his back. 
He landed on San Cristobal. And today, we are very proud with all of our partners to be a part of bringing new wind electricity to the island. After overcoming a lot of challenges, the first wind power project in Ecuador has begun to provide electricity from a clean source, reducing by more than 50% the use of diesel fuel on San Cristobal Island. We will also eliminate about 3,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions every year, which becomes a valuable contribution to the conservation of this natural world heritage site. Thank you.